Hey guys, the topic for today is corneal dystrophies. So many people have asked me about this topic to concise it and uh, provide all the information at one place. Actually, this topic is uh, not given in any particular source properly. So I have uh, referred it in three different sources and made a notes out of it and brought it for you. So the topic, uh, I mean the points that I tell you in this video are more than enough for NEET PG and NSA. So this is completely purely a factual based topic. So just concentrate on what I am teaching. Uh, try to mug it up here itself and just solve few questions and you will be done with this topic. So let's get started now. Firstly the corneal dystrophies. The definition goes like it is bilaterally inherited condition which is not associated with either inflammation or vascularization or any systemic disease and it is progressive in nature and autosomal dominant inheritance is seen. So this is the definition bilaterally inherited autosomal dominant condition which is not associated with inflammation vascularization which is progressive condition and it is not associated with any systemic disease and the age of presentation is usually first to second decade. So this is what you need to know about the basic understanding of the corneal dystrophies. I'll provide you this PDF in my telegram channel guys don't try to take screenshots because everything is written so small in this so you have to expand it and read so don't worry i'll provide you the pdf right after this video recording you can check it in the telegram channel the links to the telegram channel are provided in the description and uh, see uh, let us dissect this uh, definition first so i have told you every corneal dystrophy is progressive right so when there is one exception for this condition so that exception is a non-progressive corneal dystrophy. So a non-progressive corneal dystrophy example is Meesmann's dystrophy. So look at this. Meesmann's dystrophy is non-progressive. So remember it like Meesmann's dystrophy is non-progressive. So N for N. Meesmann's is non-progressive and I have highlighted two E's in capital here because it is epithelial dystrophy. It is an example of epithelial dystrophy. So this is the non-progressive exception. Coming to the autosomal dominant exception, so few conditions are X-linked recessive and autosomal recessive. Few dystrophies are. So the autosomal recessive dystrophies are provided here for you. So I have written it. There are three autosomal recessive uh, corneal dystrophies that you need to know. One is macula, the second is gelatinous drop like and the third is CHED type 2. And among this also macula is usually uh, asked question like frequently they ask you about which of the following corneal dystrophies are autosomal recessive. So you will find the macular option in it op in the options. So you have to opt for macula. So this is the frequently tested thing. Macular is autosomal recessive whereas rest all corneal dystrophies are autosomal dominant. Now uh, regarding definition the important exceptions are done. Now let us understand different types of corneal dystrophies. So the major difficult part everyone faces in this topic is remembering the names and in which category of corneal dystrophies does it occur. So in order to understand that let me tell you one simple uh, cornea image of cornea. So this is cornea and you have five layers in cornea. Okay so remember it like A b c d and e so a for anterior epithelium b for bowman's membrane c for corneal stroma d for desmet's membrane and you also have the recently discovered layer duas layer also and e for endothelium so these are the uh, layers of cornea. So there are five important layers. A for anterior epithelium, Bowman's membrane, corneal stroma, Desmet's membrane and endothelium. So corneal dystrophy can occur in any one of the layers. So usually corneal dystrophy affects any one of the layer. So there are different types of dystrophies, right? So some occurs in the epithelium, some involves the Bowman's membrane and some occur in stroma and some occur together in Desmet's membrane and endothelium. So there are four different types of dystrophies that you need to learn. So let us uh, see the categories. One is anterior epithelial. Second is B for Bowman's membrane. 
third is C that is stroma corneal stromal dystrophy and next is Desmet's membrane and endothelial dystrophy so this is what I have explained in that layers of cornea diagram now let us learn the names firstly epithelial in epithelial you have the name epithelial in almost all the names like epithelial basement membrane dystrophy has epithelium in it epithelial recurrent erosion dystrophy in basements I have already told you E and E two E's that is epithelial and another thing like uh, remaining thing that you need to remember is microcystic or map dot or fingerprint or kogans everything is same it has many synonyms microcystic map dot fingerprint or kogans this is overall most common corneal dystrophy so this is what you need to know about epithelial in microcystic map dot fingerprint or kogans which is overall most common and the rest to have epithelial in the name and measements has two e's that is epithelial and least epithelial dystrophy has epithelial word in it and gelatinous drop like dystrophy gelatinous drop like dystrophy important point is it has amyloid deposits in it and it shows the mulberry pattern on histology this is an important question mulberry pattern on histology is seen in gelatinous drop like dystrophy so mulberry you uh, you find the fruit like this right mulberry appearance is like this so all these are looking like drops also so gelatinous drop like is having mulberry pattern on histology and i have already told you everything is autosomal dominant except for few conditions which are autosomal recessive among that gelatinous is one condition so look at here in autosomal recessive i have written gelatinous and the important point here you have to remember is mulberry drop like appearance now coming to the second one and measements uh, another exception is inferent that is non-progressive and the mutation is seen in keratin gene in measements coming to the bowman's membrane everything has letter b in it so bowman's membrane is for b reese buckler thiel bank and uh, grayson wilbrand so uh, these names are also difficult to pronounce so just uh, remember like everything which has b in it so you can look at all the dystrophies there is no b anywhere see if you can ask me like basement membrane has b but the word epithelial is like looking at you right see i am epithelial so exclude that except for that Reese Buckler, Thiel, uh, Bank and uh, Grayson Wilbrandt has B in it. So that is for Bowman's membrane. And in Bowman's membrane, this Reese Buckler and uh, this Thiel has 5Q31 that is TGF beta 1 mutation. And one thing that you need to remember in Reese Buckler is it has fishnet or reticular pattern. So remember it like RE for reticular pattern reticular pattern or fishnet pattern on histology is seen whereas for thiel it is honeycomb pattern you're getting right uh, everything is factual there is nothing to explain so this is going to be a um, topic which you have to memorize which you have to uh, like download this pdf and revise it many times okay all the important points i have written so don't worry now coming to the stromal corneal stromal dystrophies uh, See, first let us learn about Desmet's membrane and endothelial so that rest all will be under corneal stromal. See, for Bowman's membrane it was B and for endothelial or basement membrane, look at this diagram guys. So, this is anterior epithelium. So, endothelium is in the posterior end, right? So, every word that starts with posterior comes in endothelial classification. See, here posterior polymorphous corneal dystrophy is in endothelial. And Fuchs endothelial word has endothelial in it. Congenital hereditary endothelial dystrophy, CHED has endothelial. And X-linked endothelial corneal dystrophy. I have told you everything is autosomal dominant except for few conditions which are X-linked recessive and autosomal recessive. X-linked recessive condition is X-linked endothelial corneal dystrophy. In this, the Fuchs endothelial corneal dystrophy is most common among endothelial, whereas most common overall is map dot. So, world map is drawn overall, right? So, overall it is map dot, whereas in endothelial, if they ask you in particular, then it should be Fuchs endothelial. Whereas this posterior polymorphous corneal dystrophy is associated with Alport's disease. So, remember it like Alport's disease. So, that is posterior polymorphous corneal dystrophy it has donut lesions in the cornea 
and the dystrophy is associated with keratopia you uh, you can exclude these points also but just remember that alport syndrome associated corneal dystrophy is alport that is posterior polymorphous corneal dystrophy coming to the chd it has two types one and two one is autosomal dominant whereas chd two is autosomal recessive you don't need to uh, mark up that point also not not so important and this is important again there is a syndrome called as harboyan syndrome which is congenital hereditary endothelial dystrophy which is associated with sensory neural hearing loss so chd plus snhl together constitute a syndrome called as harboyan syndrome and x linked is the name itself is telling that it is x linked recessive inheritance so now that you have done with the epithelial which have epithelial name in it or which uh, lees and gelatinous are done in epithelium coming to the bowman's membrane b for b all the names with b in it and desmet's membrane and endothelial has posterior word in it or endothelial word in it so the rest all are under stromal corneal dystrophies like lattice granular macular snyder flex posterior amorphous corneal dystrophy and central cloudy dystrophy or francois so everything comes under stromal corneal dystrophy firstly let us learn about lattice corneal dystrophy it has two types like lattice type 1 and lattice type 2 among the stromal the most common is lattice type 1 both uh, the lattice type has amyloid deposition it, it be it first type or second type it has amyloid uh, deposition in it amyloidosis we know that uh, congo red stain is positive for amyloid stain so it is stained with congo red coming to the granular dystrophy granular dystrophy is of two types same like lattice type 1 and type 2 type 1 has only one that is hyaline whereas type 2 has both deposits one is hyaline and amyloid this type 2 granular dystrophy is called as avellino that means it has a for amyloid and in for hyaline so remember like in is for hyaline lin sorry lin is for hyaline and a is for amyloid amyloid and hyalin is seen in granular type 2 so since amyloid is there it is congo red positive and hyalin is there it is mason trichrome stain positive so that is regarding the granular then comes the macular as already discussed it is autosomal recessive one exception and this is the overall least common so overall most common and overall least common let me write it for you so overall most common and least common both starts with m so overall most common is like spreading like a map huge so that is map dot or cogans whereas overall least common is starting with m that is macular okay so this is regarding overall whereas when you discuss about most common in endothelial it is fuchs and in most common in stroma that is lattice yeah now comes the least common overall least common one that is macular corneal dystrophy it has acid mucopolysaccharides in it the deposits of acid mucopolysaccharides it's seen and which is alcyon blue positive it is due to inborn error of keratin sulfate metabolism so one thing uh, that you need to understand here is uh, these three points are important guys so i have uh, brought them at one place so look at this granular remember the mnemonic graham so g r a is for graham h is for hyaline deposit a is for amyloid deposit and m is for mason trichrome stain so mason trichrome stain is for hyaline and we already know that for amyloid the stain is congo red so they usually ask you the question like which of the following is mason trichrome positive corneal dystrophy and they give you the options of granular macular lattice and snyder so then you have to answer it like granular because granular has hyaline deposits which is mason trichrome stain positive coming to the macular the mnemonic is macu and muco almost same right m u c macu is muco polysaccharide deposits so it has a l c that is alcyon blue positive macu is muco polysaccharide and it is alcyon blue positive coming to the lattice remember like l a c so l is for lattice a is for amyloid deposit and c is for congo red this is almost like amyloid deposit of graham like that is granular so whenever you find the word amyloid it is congo red positive and when it is hyaline it is mason trichrome positive and if it is muco polysaccharide it is alcyon blue positive so if you have to take one point from this entire lecture that has to be this table
most important and most frequently tested zone. So this completes the important uh, deposits and the staining. And restol is just the name: posterior amorphous corneal dystrophy, Francois, Snyder, and flex corneal dystrophy. It's just the name. If I miss any uh, reading out any point, that implies it's not that important. You just go through the PDF ones. So I think I have explained you all the names and the things that you have to remember. Now coming to the treatment part of different dystrophies. If it is epithelial, that is anterior epithelial, you can apply the uh, ointment or you can apply the bandage, right? So here you will get uh, antibiotic ointment and uh, bandage into it into the role. And the clinical features of epithelial because it's most uh, exposed part to the environment, so it leads to recurrent erosions because it is the most anterior part of cornea. Coming to the stromal uh, dystrophies, it causes diminution of vision as its clinical features and the treatment that you do is keratoplasty. Kerato meaning cornea, right? Keratoplasty. Coming to the endothelium is for edema. The clinical feature is edema and the hypertonic saline drops are given and the keratoplasty is the treatment. So this is the treatment flowchart for different types of corneal dystrophy. So um, I have explained the treatment, the important, most important table. And uh, yeah, here is one more point. Which of the following corneal dystrophies uh, presents as inborn errors? So for the Meesman, I have already told you the defect is in keratin gene. For the macular, the defect is keratin sulfate. And for Snyder, the defect is in lipid metabolism. So I have uh, written it here. Snyder is uh, corneal, right? Corneal stromal. So remember like Snyder has stroma and C for cornea. So corneal stromal is Snyder, which has lipid deposits. Uh, one, uh, one thing you have to uh, remember here, there is a confusing point here. Posterior amorphous corneal dystrophy comes under stroma, whereas posterior polymorphous corneal dystrophy comes under endothelium. So remember like both P's. PO, PO, both posterior side. Right? So, most posterior it is an indicator of. So, that is endothelium based. Whereas, only one P, that is only one posterior, that is stromal. So, go by this mnemonic now. Uh, both posteriors, if it is mentioned, then it is endothelium. Now, one thing uh, about uh, Fuchs endothelial dystrophy, most frequently asked, if uh, this is the single most important disease from this entire chart. So, Fuchs endothelial dystrophy is most common in FRF female and coax2 mutation is seen. Worsening of the symptoms in the morning is seen and it is associated with open angle glaucoma. This is an important question. Fuchs endothelial dystrophy is associated with open angle glaucoma. And you find gut data in the histology that the, those are endothelial excrescences. Beaten metal appearance is seen in the cornea. When the endothelial function is lost, that's leads that leads to entering of the fluid into the cornea so that leads to stromal edema which causes bullae in the epithelium these bullae in the epithelium are painful so usually the question that they ask is defect is in endothelial layer whereas bulla are seen in epithelium so this is a tricky point defect is in endothelial layer whereas bulla is seen in epithelium in fixed endothelial dystrophy the treatment is like every other endothelial which is hypertonic saline and uh, keratoplasty. See in fixed endothelial dystrophy the damage is here so that leads to fluid entry so the corneal stroma is filled with the fluid and it reaches it until the epithelium and that forms the raised bulla. So the defect is here in the endothelium whereas bulla which are painful are seen in the epithelium. So that's all guys uh, this is all you need to know about the corneal dystrophy this is a small topic and I think uh, I helped you with the mnemonics part also. Thank you. Please support by liking the videos. Don't just watch the videos. Do like the videos so that uh, uh, they will be uh, helpful to many other people, many other fellow aspirants too. Bye.